Hey, what's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? Welcome back to the challenge. Your boy Jay Laron with Jay Laron Presents, where we talk about the facts, foolishness, and black female effery. Hey, today's video, man, is going to be it's going to be a good video, right? So we're looking at parentage by estoppel, which basically means if you are dating a woman with a child and you are deemed um let's say if you are deemed you know the that that if you are acting in a fatherly figure put it that way if you are acting in a fatherly way to that child you could be deemed the father and you can be put on child support is basically what it's saying right so in this video i have a collab between o'shea duke jackson and dennis sperlin right i came across this i came across this uh, I was listening to, I think it was, yeah, Take Heed to the Message, where she was talking about it, and she was also on Black Men Unfiltered, where they were talking about it a couple of weeks ago, right? So, you know, I thought this was very interesting and something to talk about, because men do need to know what's going on. Now, this parentage by estoppel thing, from what I'm looking at, it's in, it's in, it's in California, Massachusetts, and a couple of other more states yeah it's in california colorado massachusetts new hampshire and new mexico um this is since 2002 so these from what i looked up i looked up and i can only find them in these um in these five states right so yeah so these five states are are doing it so you guys, y'all need to be careful out there because if you are dating a woman <laughs> and if she has a child, if you are doing anything for that child, taking them to school, teaching them how to read, helping them with homework, helping them with sports, or you know anything fatherly, they can you can be deemed as that child's father and could possibly be put on child support. But let's go ahead and let's get into this video. And let's listen to O'Shea and Dennis Sperling as, you know, Dennis Sperling breaks down everything from the legal aspects. All right. And again, like I said, I, I, I picked this up from Take Heed to the Message and Black Men Unfiltered Network. So if you guys haven't, go ahead, you know, head over to their channel. I will drop their links in the description below so you guys can go over to their channel, give them a like and a subscribe. All right. Fair use, fair use, and let's go ahead and get into it, all right? Some bright brothers that are, <laughs> that are come with it. So right. um, you you put up a, a number of, uh, of live streams, and yeah. your channel was growing quite rapidly. Mm -hmm. And the, the topic that struck me was uh, on your Dennis Sperling Filter channel, Right, he said it's called "Don't Date Single Mothers," or you may be ordered to order to pay child support. I said, "Wow, this is interesting." Yeah, because yeah. you know, here in the, in the manosphere spaces, there are many reasons why guys tell people not to date child uh, women with with children. And it revolves around you know being a cleanup man type of archetype, right. or you know not being her first choice. But yours was your, your argument is based clearly. On legality right or purely right. on legality what, right. what do you mean by by when you say that well let me say this oh i'm not here to tell people what to do like i said i give young men advice they can use advice if they want to this is not just for young men it's older men uh again i don't practice family law but there have been some developments in the uh in the in the family law area of, of, of law you know think about it um and it's only recent relatively speaking. In 2015, uh, the Supreme Court addressed the same-sex marriage arguments in, in the Oberville Hodges case. And basically what that case was about was about two women who were married and one of them wanted rights to uh, 
Well, actually, it was about two women who were trying to get a divorce or trying to get married, and it was forcing the state, the different states, to recognize those marriages. Of course, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of same-sex marriage, and that's how we got that ruling. Now, as a result of that, there's been some changes in uh, case law. You know, there's a case out of Michigan, and it's called uh, Stankovich v. Milleron. And this, ca this case came down out of the uh, appellate court of Michigan in November of 2015, shortly after the Supreme Court case. And basically what they said was uh, that um, a, 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 this is another case where two women wanted to have custody over a child, one the biological mother, one the non-biological parent. But because she had spent so much time with the child, they said, well, she took on a parental role. And because of that, she's entitled to custody. Now, what had already been on the books was the fact that they can make a person, uh, at that time, they used the tank language, a biological father, pay child support, uh, even if it was against his will. And so now I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here contemplating like, wow, that's that's kind of, that's a horrible situation to be in. And here's something else, and I'd like to share this with you, uh, O'Shea. I'm going to bring this okay. up on the, yeah, uh, on the screen here, if I can. This is a post that I saw on the internet a while, uh, uh, maybe, I, I guess maybe last week. If you don't think women are thinking about this, let's let's read this post. Can you make a male babysitter sort of pay child support? I'm a single mom going to college with my sister. We currently rent an apartment together. A couple of weeks ago, I asked my neighbor, a trustworthy guy, if he could watch the kids for two hours. Well, I went to class and my sister wasn't home and he agreed. If he babysits and doesn't accept pay, can I sue him for child support because he took on a fatherly role? I'm sure I can convince the court that he accepted the fatherly role. So basically what I'm saying is, if you're not careful, you could get caught up in a situation where you could have a, uh, a judge, a woman sue you. Yes. And so the answer, her first question, can you sue him? Yes, you can sue him. Now, can you it's going to be based on whether or not a lawyer feels like there's a good faith claim. But if you got something, if you got that Overfield Hodges case and you couple that with the fact that you got this case out of Michigan. And I'm, I posted this up too, O'Shea, if you can allow that because I want the people to see the language. This is what the court said in that in that November 2015 case. This court stated that given its recognition that a person who is not the biological father of a child may be considered a parent against his will, which means even if you fuss and fight, that ain't not my child. That's not, you know, that's not my child. I don't want to be the parent. It's not that he even volunteered to say, I'm the daddy, call me daddy, call. No, not like the case in 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 in, in, in Stankovich case. There's they're referring to another case that happened back in 1996. Against this will, they made this this guy be the dad. Consequent and then consequently they burdened him with the responsibility of paying child support. Such a person such a person and being treated as a parent may also seek rights of custody or parenting. So basically they are saying, yeah, you know, before, you know, we can make somebody be the father against their will. That wasn't a problem. And we would burden them with child support, but it was kind of up in the air whether or not we would give this non-biological parent permission to spend time with this child. But now since uh, the equitable parent doctrine has been strengthened by the Overville Hodges case out of the Supreme Court of the United States, yeah, we'll go ahead and let them have parenting time, too. So what does this mean for the average brother who's hanging out? Wait a minute. So you, you mean to tell me I'm being made to pay child support because, you know, I, you know, was dating somebody with the child and I took them, took the kid here or there, did some things with them because I'm seeing his, his or her mom. So I'm being made to pay child support now. You're telling me that if I want to, I can have custody of a child that's not mine, that I really don't want custody of. But you're just going to say, oh, well, if you want to keep the child and and I guess and, you know, I can do that. Does that make any sense? Who's going to want to have custody of a kid that is not theirs, that they don't want and they're being made to pay child support on? That shit don't make no sense. Tell me, what where does that make any sense? With a single mom. What it means is, 
if she can get someone to write a letter or someone to come testify that, uh, you know, he took my child to school, he picked my child up from school, he, he, he paid for my child's clothing, he took my child to the doctor, he babysat, he took my child to a babysitter, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, to a baseball game, football game, but he overall spent his time with my child and heaven forbid, they call you daddy or stepdad, mm -hmm. right? So now what mm -hmm. are you basically giving them enough facts to at least allege that you've taken on the fatherly role. So when you break up with your ex-girlfriend and you say, I'm done with you, you cheated on me, you broke the windows out of my car, I'm through with you. She can then go find a very, find a family law lawyer, present to him that fact pattern, and then what? And then you get sued. Damn. Good faith believe I, this child, you know, under the equitable parent doctrine, there's a good faith belief, there's a good claim here. Like, maybe I'll lose, maybe I'll win. But guess what? Even defending that is going to cost you money. You're going to have to retain a lawyer mm -hmm. to fight against that. That may be five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, and when it goes up on appeal, uh, on an appeal, it can be astronomical. So you got to fight with a woman who you know and they know and everybody knows you haven't had a child. You may not even have had a sexual relationship with the woman. That's how expansive this can go. So, so what I'm trying to warn you guys is. This, this is the potential that's out there. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it'll happen today. I'm not saying it'll happen tomorrow, but it's going to happen at some point. Somebody mm -hmm. is going to be the test case because here's what the government is looking at. The government is saying marriages rates are going down. Mm -hmm. We need somebody to take these the, out of bet wedlock birth rate is going up. We need somebody to help take care of these kids because mm -hmm. otherwise we're on the hook for taking care of these kids. We got to mm -hmm. pay for medical. We got to pay for welfare. We got to do that. So why not get the closest man available to mm -hmm. help pay for those kids? So if a woman can get you on the hook. It's all about the motherfucking money. money. It's all about the motherfucking money. money. Look, man, she will. And this, I just thought it was interesting, man. And that's why I brought it up. And if you don't think women are thinking about that, refer back to that post that I put up from 10 years ago. You know? Let me ask you, uh, you make a good point. because you, you, you talked about the Stankovich case that was in Michigan. Mm -hmm. And then the... The Overfield uh, case out of the Supreme Court of the United States, right. Right. And then the, and then the post you talked about, the babysitter. Mm -hmm. Now, somebody might come in and say, well... Well, you know, Counselor Sperling, this is a case that happened in Michigan. Right. I, I'm, I mean, come on, man. I'm in South Carolina. I'm in Tennessee. Right. And this is just an anomaly. Mm. You know, that, that happened in Michigan. But what, what does that got to do with Tennessee? What does that got to do with Virginia? What would you say to somebody who asked that? I would say that a lawyer like myself who practices law in Texas, Louisiana, uh, Illinois, and New York, licensed to practice in state court would be aware of those cases. And the only question is whether or not he had a good faith basis to make those allegations. And since the equitable parent doctrine has been strengthened and this Jenner, this Stankley case based it on the Oberville Hodges case, which is a United States Supreme Court case, there's a good faith basis for them to make those allegations. In other words, what they can do is they could say, look, Your Honor, the Supreme Court has strengthened the equi the Supreme Court of the United States, which governs mm -hmm. all of our cases yes. here in the United States and state mm -hmm. court, federal court. There, that's the supreme authority. They have strengthened the equitable parent doctrine. And so, matter of fact, I'll have you take a look at this Stankley case, which is out of Michigan, and it's not binding authority in the state of uh, Kentucky. But look at the rationale that they follow, and the rationale is sound, and we need to impose that here. Is this? It's in the best interest of the child to make mm. sure that the person who took on that fight the best interest of the child. So it really doesn't matter what state you're in, as long as that lawyer can prove, you know, to the judge that they have a case. Basically, if they can prove that, you know, like you said, in best interest of the child, if he can make a case out of it or make a good enough argument that this man has been taking care of this child in a fatherly way and has, you know, a witness, you know, somebody that can write a letter saying, yeah, I've seen this man act, you know, in a fatherly way towards this child. 
they can make a case. Damn. So it, yeah, it really so it really don't matter what state you're in as long as they can make a case and make a as long as they can make an argument and the argument sounds plausible that the that the the um judge can say, "Okay, let's go with it." Damn. Damn. That's some bullshit. Fatherly role for the past two and a half, three, four, five years maintains that that role because it's in the best interest. They took the role, so now they can't up and abandon it. They can maybe break up in the relationship with the, with the mother, but not the child judge. And you'll get a judge. Mm. I'm I'm telling you guys, there's a judge out there. Oh yeah, that will will say, well, this case we're not going to dismiss it on summary judgment. We're going to let it go to trial. Wow. Everybody deserves their day in court. Mm -hmm. And you got to pay for that. And heaven forbid you say, I'm out of money. And your lawyer says, well, you know, maybe you can settle. And then you end up paying child support for a child that's not yours. Or you go mm -hmm. to a jury trial, you get a ju judgment, and it's either favorable or unfavorable, and it gets appealed. So now you're caught up in a situation where you're paying money. Imagine spending seven years in your 20s or 30s while you're trying to build yourself up. You nasty son of a bitch. Mm -hmm. and you, your money is going to pay for some case for child support for a kid that's not yours. It's all about the motherfucking money. money. It's all about the motherfucking money. money. Every man just be aware. And here's the thing. They do it often in Canada. So it's not like it's, it's, it's foreign. Canada is where it's happening. Now, it'd be one thing if somebody said, well, that's up in Canada. That's not here. Then it's, what the heck are you talking about? Well, now it's, it's landed in our backyard. You know, it's a quick ride from Michigan to Ohio. You can make your way to the rest of the states from there. And trust me, they're doing it in Michigan, California, New York, and some of these other uh, Democratic, more liberal, uh, female-friendly states are going to to take that mantle and, and, and go with it. You know, Al Green's, um popular filmmaker uh, made a, a movie called Frustrated 2. Mm -hmm. child support system which talks about <laughs> everything that you're talking about right now <laughs> you had guys right, on there yeah. that were not the father mm. and we're paying child support yeah and they you know go ahead well uh there are different scenarios in which you can 30 percent of men uh in in and, and look let me see, let me tell you guys don't call me about your child support issues fella i did with car accidents 18 wheelers <laughs> Don't you call me. You better not call my office asking me for help. I just, I'm doing this as almost like a public service announcement. This is basic family law. Any family law lawyer can kind of talk to you about the equitable parent doctrine. Now, can they tell you what's going to happen? Can they tell you you will never get sued for a child support to pay a child's not yours? They can't do it. But, but back to what I was saying before, 30% um, of men in the UK are paying for children that aren't theirs. And there are, and I would have Whoa, to say, say it again. Thirty percent of men. And there was a study that came out that said thirty percent of men are paying for children that aren't theirs biologically, and some know and some don't know. In this situation here in the United States, there are different scenarios where you can end up paying for a child that's not biologically yours already. There was a case out of Texas where uh, a man, uh, I believe he was in jail at the time. Um, well, actually, here's how it went. He was paying for a child. Money was coming out of his check every month. So a woman had said, this child is yours. They began to garnish his check. It was like $20, $30. He barely noticed it. And so the time period to, to uh, fight against that had elapsed. I believe it was two years at the time. But nevertheless, he let 15, 20 years go by. And, not, and, 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 and he stopped paying it because he got a new job or whatever. And they couldn't find him. And so by the time she caught back up with him again, he was $60,000 in arrears. This Damn. Period. DNA evidence had proved it. So that's once in it. But he still was forced to pay uh, uh, under the, the current state of, uh, of, of, of the law. So this is not something that's that uncommon. People have to pay. People are sometimes pay, forced to pay for children that aren't theirs even if they know it's not there. So that's no safety. Uh, that's no umbrella to hide under. No shame. Well, let me ask you this, because obviously, you know, for a lot of the, you know, black men, and I, I hate to go here, but in our community, um, 
you know, obviously single parenthood is something that's that's on the rise mm-hmm. with a lot of African American men. Um, you know, with the a lot of sisters that are historically black men have been known to be a little bit more tolerant of dating right. single moms because a lot of our families were kind of unified, like the Brady Bunch. You know, he had kids, she had kids, we kind of got together and we kind of been like that. But what if it's a brother that you know you like African American women, you want to stay in the black community, like you're very involved in the black community as a professional. Yeah. And uh, you know, you want to date black women, but you know, obviously, uh there are there are a lot of there are some black women that have kids, right? And that's a so it's a yeah. problem for you. What 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 knowing back on your life, you know, just in picking um a, a mate, you know, what would you su- suggest to black men who you know, because they all say, well, not all single moms are you know, like this, but they want to date and, and, and possibly stay in the black community. What would you suggest how they should go about it and trying to attract some woman that is, you know, that don't have kids and things like that? Well, man, oh, shit, I don't give dating advice. You know, and that's one thing I don't do. I, I don't give <laughs> relationship advice. Uh, but what I will say is watch your wallet, you know, because whatever future you have, whatever you're trying to build yourself up to be, will be seriously jeopardized by a monthly child support payment. What mm-hmm. happens if you go back on your, you, you get it in arrears on your child support, right? You lose your license, your driver's mm-hmm. license. I know you're in your, on your way to medical school, you'd lose your medical license, your, your law license, you, you over your trucking license, so you can't work. This is what, and you're paying, and this is because of child support that you're paying for a child that's not yours, but generally mm-hmm. speaking, in the black community, I believe it's somewhere between 70 to 80 percent of children are being born are born out of wedlock. Mm-hmm. And so in a situation like that, uh, you kind of uh, you can you date at your own peril. You date a woman, you have a bad relationship, you break up, but you created a relationship with that child. She has that option, you know, and, and it's not well known at this point, but she will have that option. And the question is, do you want your future and your fortune and your destiny in the hands of someone else, especially mm-hmm. an ex-girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Something bad enough to have a wife, what? an ex-wife. Now you got all, imagine if all your ex-girlfriends who had Oh children, my goodness. I know you're going, go ahead, go ahead and say that. Got oh together God. And uh, put you on child support for all these kids that are Damn. <laughs> damn. Just imagine that. You got all just think about you done had three or four girlfriends, all of them got kids, all on baby mamas, and you done interacted with all these kids. Now all of a sudden, all four of them can put you on on child support. Man, that's some crazy ass shit. I I, I couldn't. Damn. That's crazy. That is ridiculous, man. You guys, y'all single dudes, y'all be careful when dating these women, these baby mamas. There's a bunch of them out here. So, y'all, be careful. Oh, I didn't even think about that. The children that you hadn't even... Hell, it's not even about ex-girlfriends. What if the neighbor's kid, who you spent a lot of time with, developed a fatherly relationship with you? And so now you got the neighbor's kid who said, I miss him, and his mom says, there's nothing I can do about it. Can you come visit? Well, I'm going to, well, no, I can't. I moved out of town. Well, I'm going to go ahead and put you on, I'm going to put you on child support because you maintain a fatherly relationship with my son for the five or six years you were our neighbor. You cut teeth, taught him how to cut grass. You see what I'm saying, man? Mm -hmm. It's almost to the point that it's got. Damn. It's like you can't even be nice anymore. You know what I'm saying? Just out of the kindness of your heart, you could be the neighbor, like he's saying, and you helping the boy cut, teach him how to cut grass. You might show him how to change a flat tire or install a ceiling fan or something. You can't even do that. Because these women will try to put you on child support just for the hell of it. Because you're a nice dude. And they might see that you're making some money. He can afford it. He's single. He ain't got no kids. That's dirty. I mean that that that's some wicked shit, man. You so damn evil. Yeah, evil. 
save yourself, black man. I don't blame these. I don't blame the passport bros. Damn, that's some dirty shit. That's to the point that this regime of law has become ridiculous, and that's what happens when you have cases like Oberville and Hodges, and whatever you feel about same sex marriage, it's a stretch, right? It's a stretch. It's a stretch in the law. You're allowing people from the same. See, marriage was initially uh, originally created as a, a biblical principle. Yeah, you can get married to multiple women. You get all kind of stuff. But it was between a man and a woman, and typically the children were the responsibility of the father. Mm -hmm. And we can prove who the father was, or at least if he was born during the marriage, it's the child, it's the child's father. But now we've kind of stretched that law into right. a in, into a no man's land. So who knows what's gonna happen? You right. know, and this is what happens when you start getting into to to absurdities and unknown regions. These things happen. This is a glitch in the system that hasn't been corrected. And I would hate for any of you guys to be the ones that correct. Where does it stop is the question. Where does mm -hmm. it stop? Is it, is it going to stop with people who have been in relationships with folks? What about your next door neighbor? What about a kid you just spent a little bit of time? You taught them how to, uh, you know, take an engine out of a, a you know, F-150. And now you that's that's deemed the fatherly role. It's going to be a fact pattern. It's, it's wide open, O'Shea. We don't know yet. I don't know. And any lawyer, I don't care how much family law, they, any lawyer that says they know, oh, that's crazy. They don't know. Because the first thing you learn in law school is that there are no definites. They're just arguments. And there are facts. And there are questions. And then the jury is going to determine. And nobody ever knows what the jury is going to do. So, facts. there you go. Nothing's definite. Wow. Well, brother, you, know, you really... <laughs> summed it up for us here in, in a short segment I, I do appreciate you coming over and, and, and yeah. just explaining these things to us for the brothers that's going to come it's going to be a very powerful video and i'm glad you were able to use your expertise and just breaking this down and making this a, a public service announcement yeah. to to those people who are in, in this black male online community if they come and subscribe to the dennis sperling okay yeah so so that was that man damn that that's crazy that is crazy. Just imagine, like they were saying, you're just being you. You're just being a good dude in the community, trying to help the kids out in the, in the community who don't have a father, right? You know, taking them to the to the park, taking them to to games. You know, help. Like I said, showing them how to do stuff, cut grass. Like I said, showing them showing them how to change a flat tire, or what or whatever. And because that the woman sees you doing all this stuff, seeing that you might be, you know, in a good position money wise to help take care of her, her and her child, she can put you on child support. And all she needs is somebody like a witness to to come 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 in with her and say, yeah, I've seen this dude act in a fatherly way. And now all of a sudden you're on child support and you got to pay uh, an attorney to 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 fight it. I mean that's crazy. I mean all you all you were doing was just being a nice guy, and now you're on a hook for child support. You got to hire an attorney to try to fight to fight it, so you won't get. Man, that's, bro. I'm telling you guys. I mean, you can do what you want to do, but like I said, I am not trying to tell you what to do or what not to do. I'm just saying this is ridiculous. I mean. And this video, as you can tell, this was an old video. This was done about three years ago, but this still applies today. You know what I mean? They this this, this can happen. So all it takes is a woman to to you know go to an attorney and ask that question. And if that attorney feels that he has a case that he can present an argument, and the judge can say, "Oh yeah, that's a good argument. We can yeah," because they have all this because this happened before. Like you said, this happened back in Michigan. Massachusetts and other states, California, where this has happened. So they can look back and say, well, it happened here. So why not? Let's let's take it to a jury and see what happens. You know what I'm saying? Now you're on the hook trying to hire an attorney to to get it to where you don't have to pay. But like you said, if you ain't got the money, you can settle. But if you settle, guess what? You got to pay child support. On a child that you did not father, on a woman that you didn't even have sex with. Damn, that's cold. But you guys, tell me what y'all think about this in the comments below. 
please like, subscribe, share. All right, you guys, please be good to yourself. By all means, let's be good to one another. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go to work, cause my boss is a jerk, and I'm not even that paid. I need a change in my life, cause I don't feel alive, and there's nothing that makes me happy. Oh. Hold my beer for a minute I'm about to quit my job Cash in for a ticket I'm going on a trip And I don't plan to visit I'm gonna stay there Till I feel like I'm winning all And this is just the beginning I need a big change Help me feel like living I need a big swing Home runs I'm hitting And I'll never look back Moving on till I get it all And we all got dreams We all want things But what you gonna do for it? How you gonna move for it? What you gonna be? And do you believe This is my game to play, to claim a brand new name, oh And I ain't gonna lie to you, I'm a bit nervous that I might screw everything up that I've ever done But what's the point of living if you ain't having fun? I guess I'll try this, try that, might miss, gotta find what I'm good at I guess I look here, look there, over where am I scared, where am I at? I gotta make it in this life, whatever makes me happy, know I'm doing things right Sipping in the summer on a goose and Sprite, or find a night For how you gonna move for what you gonna be? And do you believe we can do anything?